Given what we've covered here on the channel, if your ears don't perk up when you hear the word choice, then you haven't really been listening. And as you can imagine, an episode called Choices has a number of significant details we need to cover. Previously, I might have referred to it simply as a plot episode or season arc episode, but Choices represents the beginning of an interesting transition in the series, where the strengths of plot episodes and the strengths of one-offs begin to blur together. Choices is a season arc episode, but retains much of the charm and whimsy of the show's bottle episodes, while still building steam towards an epic season finale. And as we go along, the series' bottle episodes will start to deliver details of season arcs in powerful and completely unexpected ways. It's just another aspect of Buffy that makes it one of the most unique and captivating shows I've ever watched. The mayor has gotten Faith a new present, and Faith jokes that the mayor wants her to help a friend move a sofa. This isn't a free ride, young lady. You know, I'm beginning to think that somebody's getting a little spoiled. Maybe I should take this back. Sorry. Faith and the mayor's relationship is easily my favorite part of this season arc. I don't think it's entirely coincidental, given how much I cherish Buffy and Giles' relationship. But you can't help but grin at this tiny scene, even though he's giving her a knife that would make a Klingon's bum pucker in fear. And Faith is being dispatched to the airport to pick up a box of infinite bug monsters. <laughs> <laughs> Another cookie? So cute. In the meantime, Buffy and Angel are out slaying, and Buffy, in a massive change from previous seasons, brings up the future with Angel. Buffy has gotten into Northwestern and seems nonplussed about the whole thing, especially in comparison to her mother's reaction. At school, we find out that Willow has gotten into every school under the sun, and when Buffy tries to diffuse the venom between Xander and Cordelia, Cordelia lashes out in typical fashion. I'm sorry, Buffy. This conversation is reserved for those who actually have a future. Buffy implores Wesley to let her leave for school. With the power invested in me by the council, I forbid it. Oh yes, that should settle it. I love Wesley's silly little hand motion here. I don't think it actually means anything. I always read this as him just making up something to seem more significant and it backfiring badly. Or head boy things. And Buffy says if she can get Faith in the box for graduation, she should be allowed to go and begins to execute on a plan. Meanwhile, Faith kills a man bringing a secret box to the mayor. You killed him. What are you, the narrator? That is such a writer's joke. She carries the box to City Hall, where Buffy sees her go in with it. As the mayor stokes Faith's ego without paying attention, she makes to open the box and he has an obvious panic reaction. Buffy bludgeons information out of one of the vampires, and they figure out the box is called the Box of Gavrock and contains a power the mayor needs to consume in order to make the ascension come to pass. The team strategizes how to get it using blueprints of City Hall and come up with a very Ocean's Eleven type plan, or Ocean's Three in this case, Willow, Angel, and Buffy. On his way to run an errand, Xander spies Cordy through a window and can't resist the opportunity to snipe. He suggests the only reason she was so spiteful earlier was because she didn't get into any schools, and Cordy drops the hammer on him. Read him and weep, creep. Remember how well she tested? Angel lowers Buffy in from the ceiling above the box, and together they recreate the iconic scene from Mission Impossible that had come out two years before this episode. A pretty great fight ensues, and Angel and Buffy manage to make off with the loot. The mayor's veneer of vanilla sweetness drops for a moment when he finds out, and I think you can see see something amazing in his eyes when Faith brings in Willow. That sugary sweet facade of politician satire he embodies drops completely, and in his eyes we get a moment of true character. That look is actually chilling. Back at the library, the Scoobies are now trying to figure out how to get Willow back, and a mild electric panic pervades the whole scene. Oz remains stoic as the debate circles the room. Buffy wants to give the box back, and Wesley insists they destroy the box using the prepared cauldron. Wesley's argument here isn't dramatically different from the one Faith tried in consequences on her own behalf. Anyways, how many people do you think we've saved by now? Thousands? And didn't you stop the world from ending? Because in my book, that puts you and me in the plus column. Thousands of lives depend upon our getting rid of it. Now, I want to help Willow as much as the rest of you, but we will find another way. That Faith may have stopped evil does not justify her committing evil. Preventing an evil act with the box of Gavrock does not justify allowing another evil act in Willow's murder. We have the means to destroy this box. <laughs> At City Hall, Willow is locked up and a vampire intrudes to have a little taste. Willow levitates a pencil and stabs him in the back. I love David Fury's callback here with the levitating pencil. She then does some exploring and in the lone scene I kind of despise in an otherwise fantastic episode, stops to read the books of Ascension for a long time. So long there's even a musical cross dissolve. 
in the mayor's office. The Scoobies have the box of Gavrock, which effectively blocks the mayor's plan. The only liability right now is her being in their hands. Just get out! Stuff some of the pages in your jacket and run! Anybody with brains, anybody who knew what was going to happen to her, would be trying to claw her way out of this place. <sighs> Unsurprisingly, Faith catches her, and there's a little standoff between the two of them in which Willow manages to scar Faith with words. You're just a big, selfish, worthless waste. <laughs> you hurt me, I hurt you. That's a nice little character bit I really enjoy. The only way Willow's words hurt Faith here is if they matter to her, which means that Faith senses some of the truth of what she's saying. Even in this scene, she is a real character out of touch, but not beyond reach. The Willow Box handoff goes down in the school cafeteria, and the mayor offers some fatherly advice about Buffy and Angel's relationship. I, I just don't see much of a future for you two. You're immortal. She's not. It's fascinating that the best pieces of relationship advice Buffy has gotten all season came from two big bads. Spike in Lover's Walk. Love isn't brains, children. It's blood. Blood screaming inside you to work its will. And the mayor here. And let's forget the fact that any moment of true happiness will turn you evil. I mean, come, come on, what kind of a life can you offer her? Yet not from Giles. Perhaps monsters live untroubled by the mirage created from that last evil in Pandora's box. <laughs> Hope, whose apparition can make us so focused on the way things could be, we no longer can see them for how they are. This conversation does such a wonderful job of dancing back and forth between the show's fantasy violent realm. But unless you want Faith to gut your friend like a sea bass, you'll show a little respect for your elders. And the grounded and serious exploration of a young woman growing up. I don't sense a lasting relationship. And not just because I plan to kill the both of you, but you've got a bumpy road ahead. Snyder tries to break up the deal, thinking he's about to interfere with some drugs being sold. As he realizes the mayor is involved and begins to grovel, one of the cops on the scene opens the box and out pops a gross bug thing. Now, in fairness, pretending to have an imaginary flesh-eating bug on your face that is actually a piece of inanimate paper mache is probably a tall order. But this kind of acting always reminds me of Leslie Nielsen and the towel from Naked Gun. Faith kills the bug, but leaves the knife behind, and Snyder gets his best line in the series. Why couldn't you be dealing drugs like normal people? In the library, Willow and the gang reconnect, and Willow reveals she stole several pages from the Books of Ascension. Wesley pointedly tells Buffy their failure to prevent the mayor's plan means that Buffy can't leave, and Willow makes her choice to stay in Sunnydale. There are a few things to highlight here. First, Willow truly comes into her own, demonstrating self-assuredness, the likes of which we've only glimpsed in bits and pieces yet through the series. Perhaps too much so in the mayor's office, but it does lead to a scene in which she is almost totally devoid of Willow quirk, skillfully hitting faith right where it counts. And she even leads Buffy by example here in the final scene. And I just realized that's what I want to do. Fight evil, help people. Throughout, Buffy is being troubled by visions of what could be, that apparition of hope, and tries to reconstruct reality in a way that will allow her to move to Illinois and go to Northwestern. A reality in which she can be someone other than who she is. But in their final scene, as Buffy is beginning to accept life as it is, Willow, Buffy's metaphorical spirit, commits. Willow, who does have any and all options open to her, including moving to Oxford where they make little Gileses, commits to Sunnydale. I, I think it's worth doing. And I don't think you do it because you have to. It's a good fight, Buffy, and I want in. Perhaps it was her change in clothing this episode. Willow's dress makes her look like she's running for Queen of Wicketon, capital of Wicca State, the biggest territory in Wiccistan. As has been a favorite of mine all season, in Choices we get the continued tale of two fathers and their daughters. What is important, though, is what distinguishes these two inverted relationships. Giles' parental relationship with Buffy almost always takes the form of an invitation rather than a demand. In Faith, Hope, and Trick, there was the binding spell he made up, which allowed Buffy to unburden burden the tragic details of Angel's end. He never forced her to say anything. And when Angel came back and proved himself to be trustworthy again, Giles asked Buffy if she was still planning on spending time with him. His displeasure with the idea is clear, but he still allows Buffy to make her own choices, again, leading through invitation rather than demand or control. The one time he doesn't do that this season was in Helpless, which had disastrous results for their relationship. But Giles owns his mistakes in that episode and the resulting consequences, which include having to win 
back Buffy's trust, as well as getting booted from the council. Now, bearing that in mind, listen to the way the mayor speaks to Faith. Oh, hey, 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 shoes, shoes. You know what I wish? I wish you'd pull your hair back. Oh, come on, don't worry, drink up. There's nothing uncool about healthy teeth and bones. You're a bright, young, energetic girl with a whole life ahead of her, and I won't tolerate brooding. I'd try to have her home by 11. Always, as a child, the cooing and vocal coddling is an adorable affectation, but it also speaks to the distinction between Faith, the shadow self, and Buffy. Buffy's life is rich with meaning because Buffy always chooses, and her parental relationship reflects that freedom. By throwing in with the mayor, Faith has abandoned her freedom of choice, and thus, any access to a meaningful life. You know, it didn't have to be this way. But you made your choice. Hey, you were Slayer, and now you're nothing. <laughs> <laughs>